Hey everyone, it's Todd the Cybertruck Truck Guy, and today I want to talk about the recently released Reuters news article entitled Tesla's Secret Batteries Aim to Rework the Math for Electric Cars and the Grid. So I want to explain why I think this is one of the most important news articles that we've gotten in years as it relates to Tesla, their strategy, and the overall development of the business. I want to talk about six key takeaways from this article and then I want to talk about how the news from this article actually affects Cybertruck owners. I want to start out by explaining why this source, Reuters, is different than most of the sources that we're used to getting our Tesla news from. And Reuters is different because Reuters isn't just a provider of news content. They actually create news content for other news agencies. They're called a wire service. And they're one of two, them and the Associated Press. So basically, other news organizations use Reuters for their news. They use Reuters stories to tell their news. This means that as thorough as journalists are supposed to be, Reuters and AP have to be exceptionally thorough when they're reporting on a story because they can't afford to make a mistake. And when you're talking about something like reporting on leaks or surrounding a business, you need to have multiple sources. You can't just take the story from one person. You need to know from multiple locations that the leaked information that you're getting is legit information. Paragraph five. I talked about multiple sources. So let's look at paragraph five. It's just really a sentence, but I've labeled it paragraph five. And it says, the new million mile battery at the center of Tesla's strategy was jointly developed with China's contemporary Amperex technology, CATL, and deploys technology developed by Tesla in collaboration with a team of academic battery experts recruited by Musk, comma, three people familiar with the effort said. So they actually had three sources verifying that one particular sentence. When you read through the rest of the article, and we're going to call out some sections here in a moment, you're going to see that they don't say according to a source or an anonymous source. They refer to it always in the plural, sources or people, not a person or a source. So the main thing that I'm trying to say here is what they're saying here is not speculation. It's not guesswork. It's not hearing through the grapevine. It's a world-renowned, reputable, journalistic news source with multiple sources that are saying the same thing in order to give them enough confidence to make very bold, affirmative statements. So let's talk about my six bombshell takeaways from this article. Now, some of these are things that people have speculated about and they've conjectured and they've inferred and they've pieced together, but this is the first time we have actual journalistic source corroborated data to saying these things are true. So let's go through my six takeaways. So takeaway number one, battery pack costs have already reached parity with ICE vehicles and they're already falling below. Okay, let's look at what they had to say about that. Paragraph 20, it says, the cost of CATL's cobalt-free lithium iron phosphate battery packs has fallen below $80 per kilowatt hour, with the cost of battery cells dropping below $60 per kilowatt hour. The sources said CATL's low cobalt NMC battery packs are close to $100 per kilowatt hour. In paragraph 21, it says, Auto industry executives have said $100 per kilowatt hour for battery packs is the level at which electric vehicles reach rough parity with internal combustion competitors. You guys, right now, today, the technology is out there that can beat internal combustion engines, can match it or beat it in price. We've been, people have been talking about this for years. It's here. It's actually happening. Takeaway number two. The million mile battery is here. Yes, we've heard about it. Yes, Elon's talked about it, but it's actually being prepped to go into production later this year or the beginning of next in China. Paragraph one, electric car maker Tesla Inc. plans to introduce a new low cost long life battery in its Model 3 sedan in China later this year or early next. 
that it expects will bring the cost of electric vehicles in line with gasoline models and allow EV batteries to have second and third lives in the electric power grid. Paragraph 3 says, new, low-cost batteries designed to last for a million miles of use and enable electric Teslas to sell profitably for the same price or less than a gasoline vehicle are just part of Musk's agenda, people familiar with the plans told Reuters. Paragraph 5 says, the new million-mile battery, and they use the phrase million-mile battery, at the center of Tesla's strategy was jointly developed with CATL and deploys technology developed by Tesla in collaboration with a team of academic experts recruited by Musk. Paragraph 6 says, eventually improved versions of the battery with greater energy density and storage capacity and even lower cost will be introduced in additional Tesla vehicles in other markets including North America. Why are they being introduced in China first? Okay, well, the reason is because the only battery plant Tesla has in North America right now is Panasonic. So they have to do this. And it's not that they don't want to do them in North America. Now, this is Todd speculating, but I'm saying it's not that they don't want to put them in North America. It's that they have a new relationship with CATL and CATL is going to use this uh, new million mile battery chemistry to assemble these million mile batteries and they're in China. So they're going to put them in the Chinese vehicle first. This is the fastest way Tesla can get the million mile battery into production. Takeaway number three, Tesla is absolutely getting into the battery production business. Again, yes, it's been speculated about, but this is the first time we actually have confirmed evidence from sources that are close to Tesla that they're getting ready to do it. So paragraph number nine of the article says, Tesla also plans to implement new, high-speed, heavily automated battery manufacturing processes designed to reduce labor costs and increase production in massive Terra factories, about 30 times the size of the company's sprawling Nevada Gigafactory, a strategy telegraphed in late April to analysts by Musk. Paragraph 12 says, CATL has developed a simpler and less expensive way of packaging battery cells called cell to pack that eliminates the middle step of bundling cells. Tesla is expected to use the technology to help reduce battery weight and cost. And again, first time we have actual confirmed knowledge that Tesla is getting into major battery production. Takeaway number four, Tesla wants to be a utility. In fact, someone Someone asked them in the last conference call if they were thinking about trying to put themselves in a place to compete with the utility. And, you know, Elon Musk made it sound like they hadn't really given it much thought. Uh, that's not true. They're, it's part of their strategy. They said in, on, in paragraph four, with a global fleet of more than one million electric vehicles that are capable of connecting and sharing power with the grid, Tesla's goal is to achieve the status of a power company, competing with traditional energy providers such as Pacific Gas and Electric and Tokyo Electric Power, those sources said. Takeaway number five, Tesla is very serious about using recycling and repurposing batteries as a way to lower battery costs and extend the uh, resources that they get from building batteries. Paragraph In paragraph 10 it says, Tesla is working on recycling and recovery of such expensive metals as nickel, cobalt, and lithium through its Redwood Materials affiliate, as well as a new Second Life application of EV batteries in grid storage systems such as the one Tesla built in South Australia in 2017. That's part of their plan. It's They've, they've avoided saying anything about it, but that's part of their plan. Takeaway number six is that there's two relationships that we didn't really know for sure what was going on before. And we still don't know for sure, but we know they're strong. They're, they're not nothing. The first one is with CATL. There is something going on with CATL that is bigger than just a vendor client relationship. Tesla and CATL are sharing technologies. They're sharing battery chemistries. They're sharing battery production secrets or technologies, but somehow there's kind of this quid pro quo, this relationship that's building between 
CATL and Tesla. And that that is interesting because it sounds like it's going to be very different than the relationship that they've historically had with Panasonic. Number two, Redwood Materials. Everyone's been wondering, is J.B. Straubel and Redwood Materials actually just a subsidiary or connected or somehow related to Tesla? Because they went off on their own and then they kind of went dark. So obviously, according to this article, they're an affiliate. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. But it says Tesla is working on recycling through their affiliate, Redwood Materials. So what does this mean for Cybertruck owners? First, it clearly means that something we've all been wondering, whether or not a Cybertruck will actually be able to connect to our house or connect to the grid and actually not just take power, but put power back. If you have a Cybertruck, it means you could use it as a backup battery for your house. Okay, point number two, and this is a big deal, and I'm probably gonna do a whole other video on this because I think people have totally forgotten about this, but if you go back to when the Cybertruck was first revealed, Sandy Monroe went on Autoline After Hours, and he talked about the tooling costs of the Cybertruck plant, and he said that you could build a Cybertruck tooling facility that could produce 50,000 Cybertrucks a year for 30 million versus I want I want to I say I think it was 180 to 250 million for uh, like an F-150 or a traditional pickup truck. Point that I'm trying to make is it's going to be relatively easy to produce the structure of the Cybertruck. The big bottleneck for the Cybertruck has been batteries. So I think what this means is that they're going to be able to ramp up Cybertruck build the volume much faster than they've been able to ramp up other vehicles because they can go create multiple lines to build the Cybertruck. If it really is $30 million, no paint booth, they can really build the Cybertruck quickly if they can get the batteries. And this Terra factory in Texas probably is to me says we might all be getting our Cybertruck sooner than we thought we were going to get, especially like me that are like 400,000 plus in the reservation line. Point number three, if part of your plan to afford buying the Cybertruck was to make money on the side using the Cybertruck, whether it was robo taxi or renting it out or um, um, using it in your business or putting advertising on it, whatever your plan was or your ideas were to have the Cybertruck pay for itself, this just adds another dimension to it. If we can use the Cybertruck as a battery that we can sell, buy power low or make it for cheap with solar panels at our house and then sell it high price during midday when power is high, that adds on another dimension of money-making potential for Cybertruck owners. And lastly, number four is we already knew that with the stainless steel exoskeleton, we had a body that would be able to last a million miles. But now we know there really is gonna be the million mile battery to go alongside it. And that totally transforms the way you do the financial calculations on whether or not it makes sense to buy a Cybertruck. So if you're still trying to decide whether or not it makes sense to do a Cybertruck, spread the math of purchasing the Cybertruck from five years or six years or seven years out to 20 or 30 years. And suddenly it almost becomes financially foolish to buy anything that's not a Cybertruck. I mean, it's gonna last probably longer than most of us. Hey, before I go, I'm not sure if any of you guys would be interested in it. I shot some footage of my recent voter, uh, my recent motorcycle off-roading experience, including some crashes uh, or one crash of mine. Um, and I don't know if you guys would be interested in seeing any of that footage, but if you guys would, let me know in the comments below and I'll put together a little like, I don't know, three minute long thing about my trip just so you can see what it's like um, as far as um, off-road motorcycling, if you're interested. Um, other than that, um, remember I read all the comments. I try to reply to all of them. And so please like and subscribe and put your comments below. Other than that, thanks for helping me get to a thousand subs and um, we'll catch you next time.